Welcome to this commencement for the class of 2023. I have been to a lot of commencements, and that was by far and away the most orderly marching in of students I have ever seen. Moon and Gaia, you did an unbelievable job. We learned yesterday that Dr. Atira Coleman, for reasons that are unexpected, profound, and difficult, is unable to join us today. Dr. Coleman was smartly invited by the senior class to be this year's keynote commencement speaker. Dr. Coleman sends the senior class her love, her congratulations, and her well wishes on their bright, bright futures. Dr. Sonia Maria Johnson will say much more about Dr. Coleman and Dr. Coleman's message later in the program. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather is a sacred indigenous place located within the ancestral territories of the sovereign Sac and Fox, Ho-Chunk and Potawatomi nations as recognized by treaties between those nations and the United States of America. Welcome and happy Mother's Day. Yes, we are inside and on a campus as gorgeous as this one. A decision to be inside does not come easily, but we are going to have the honor of every one of you, class of 2023, having your name proudly pronounced by our provost, Eric Boynton, and every one of you will walk proudly across the stage and every one of your friends and family will be able to proudly cheer you as raucously as they possibly can. In fact, those cheers will echo far louder in here than outdoors. What matters most, of course, is that we are together right now in celebration of you. Now, for some great news for the three of you who probably have not yet heard it. The Bloit College baseball team won the Midwest Conference Playoff Championship yesterday. This follows their historic regular season in which they won more games than any other baseball team in the history of the Midwest Conference. They'll be playing next weekend in the NCAA tournament and we wish them well. Just a brief moment of sharing. I brought with me a change of clothes that I will be slipping into once this ceremony is over. I want to share. Those are, in fact, flamingos. And this is a change of clothes for the rest of my life. These are the shorts to go with them. OK, we'll put that silly prop away. Now to the heart of the matter. Class of 2023, our 172nd graduating class, you are about to be fully credentialed college graduates. That is a big deal. Let's give these budding rock stars a full throated congratulations. Parents, you have reared a near college graduate. It takes an army of loiters to make this commencement as special and meaningful as it is and will be. Would you please join me in thanking 
all of these inspiring colleagues and friends who made this happen for our collective awesomeness. So I'm gonna go off script just for a minute and tell you a story I just heard a few moments ago. I just saw one of my longtime friends and member of our housekeeping staff, Dorlene Bell. Over the years, the number of students who have referenced Dorlene's steady and loving guidance for our students has made an enormous difference for so many. This spring, Dorleen Bell was a recipient of the Fee Boon Kang Prize for Excellence in Advising and Mentoring. This was so deserving. So when I saw Dorleen, what she shared with me is that the news of Dorleen's award when it was sent out, one of our very generous alumni responded by contributing a significant fund to support student access to the college in Dorleen Bell's honor. Congratulations, Dorleen, and thank you so much for the generosity. So you're gonna see in a moment, this connects directly to what I want to say this morning. It is, of course, a great day to be a Beloiter. I penned the remarks that you're about to hear while sitting in the posthumously named Dr. Deborah Majid Fireside Lounge. This was not by accident. I wanted Deborah giving me that look she so often gave me that mostly said, Scott, don't screw this up. Dr. Majid was among the great mentors I have ever known. And as you will hear, that is also relevant. Today, I'm going to tell you three love stories. The specifics of these stories are compelling. The class of 2023, they're not your stories yet. As I tell these, my hope is that the stories I tell catalyze your love stories. So here we go. Matt Tolman is a graduate of the class of 1986. He's been among the most important producers of Hollywood movies for the last 30 years. Think Spider-Man, Jumanji, and more. A few years back, he received one of our prestigious alumni awards and he gave a set of really important remarks, an edited version of which I'll share with you. My first few days at Beloit felt like the first time you saw a clockwork orange. It was insane and exciting and terrifying and you knew that nothing was going to be the way it was a minute ago because until then your life had been nothing but infomercials and instructional videos. But now, this. And then it all happened so fast that you forgot to eat popcorn or drink soda and it made you laugh and cry and cringe and swear you wouldn't ever leave. Four years, a blur. And then into Matt's world enters a particular faculty member. Tom McBride, Matt recalls, that little redheaded berserker who worked himself into such a chalky lather over Shakespeare and Freud and the Bible, and who would call us on the carpet, forcing us to do one thing, to have a point of view about what we read. And it was the scariest and most cathartic thing I'd ever felt in that room. It was your responsibility to think and speak up you were failing if you didn't. Well, so what? Well, on we go. My first job in LA was in the studio mailroom. You got to sort mail, read memos, and also 
cover scripts for agents. That meant synopsizing and passing judgment on submitted screenplays. The agents depended on us, so they didn't have to actually read the scripts themselves. One day, one of them announced that a client had just given him a script and he needed coverage by the first thing in the morning and I volunteered. The script was called Devil Jocks from Hell High. I wrote a love letter to the B-movie aspirations of the thing. Next day, the agent came back looking for me. He told me that my coverage was so good that it made him look great. So he offered me a better job. Now to the point. I did nothing more, says Matt, than have a point of view. It wasn't Milton, it wasn't Elliot, it was devil jocks. But I had a point of view and that mattered. I spent a bunch of years making movies with people like Will Ferrell and Seth Rogen, and they're all much smarter and funnier than I am, but I was someone they chose to work with, and it was only because I wasn't afraid to have a point of view. You have to be willing to stand in the face of a mad, chalk-covered English professor who's calling you out in front of 30 other people forcing you to do one thing, think and express yourself. Now that's a love story. Time to move to a second one. This one from Ocean A. Gilliam, class of 2017, who came to us sight unseen from Los Angeles. As a senior, Ocean A. sent me this essay she wrote for one of her classes. The day I was set to depart for Beloit, I was nervous and uneasy, not sure of what was to come. Before leaving, I cried in my mother's arms because I was going to be all alone in a place I didn't know. As a high school student, I didn't ever imagine where I would be now. Because of Beloit, I've experienced such things as flying on a plane for the first time, hearing the terrifying noises of cicadas, <laughs> touching snow, and traveling out of the country to Russia twice. Though small, these experiences were profound. They assured me I was moving forward. Beloit has challenged me in more ways than I can count, but I have risen from each challenge stronger, even if a little beat up. As a McNair scholar, I had the opportunity to research something that resulted in my name as an author on a publication, summer at Princeton University and looking forward to attending a top graduate school in public policy, but also for the first time my work was heavily criticized and forced me to challenge my own way of thinking. Beloit has built me up to be a scholar and a leader, even if I do not fit the mold of how a society sees a leader, I have discovered that I am more than capable of success at the highest level. Starting the Black Woman Support Group was a spark that opened my mind to many possibilities. Can you see me in 10 years owning my own nonprofit and being a leader in policy? I know that I can. Despite all the hardships, the adversity, and the periods of doubt, I've come to realize that attending Beloit College was the best decision I've ever made. And if my mother was here today, she would be proud of the woman I've become. She'd be proud that I am a Beloiter. Ocean A graduated from Beloit to attend UCLA's Luskin School of Public Affairs, her dream school, UCLA's dream student. Already, she is on her way to running her own nonprofit, and she is on Beloit College's Board of Trustees. What a great love story. My third story is just a few days old. Sako Pawatamanami just completed his semester as an exchange student from Finland. At a recent celebration for departing exchange students, Saku made these remarks. Hi, my name is Saku and I am a Finnish exchange student. When I got the email last September 
that I was accepted to Boyd College, I had a mini heart attack. I would actually have to go across the Atlantic to a strange country from the movies. Surely it would be a disaster. I remained scared until Christmas, until I met Olga Ogurtsova for the first time. She told me that Beloit is the best place on earth. I felt encouraged. During the following weeks, I met Shannon Jolly and a few other exchange students over Zoom for early orientation. I felt more encouraged. Then came January, it was time to go, orientation began, and I met all of the exchange students. That moment marked the beginning of the best chapter of my life so far. So why is it the best? Why was Olga so right? Firstly, our adventures together. We've played card, played games, watched movies, gone through sensible and somewhat less sensible conversations. Together, we have been going to the gym, seen plays and concert, traveled, relaxed at the sauna, wrestled in the rain, sometimes even studied, eaten together almost every day, and most importantly, just enjoyed each other's company. My second reason is more profound. When I came here, I was a bit lost. Something was missing from my life. But my Beloit friends and mentors said some things to me that have helped me recover what was lost. They told me, I am a friend. I'm smart. I'm someone to be looked up to. I'm loved. And that I am always worthy. Olga's prediction has come true. Beloit may be the best place on earth. Now, with just six days before I leave, I feel only gratitude. Thank you, Beloit College, for this opportunity. Thank you, Olga and Shannon, for taking care of us. Thank you, professors and faculty, for teaching us something new and most important. Thank you to all my Beloit friends for the best chapter of my life so far. You will be dearly missed. Turtles all the way down. I often get asked, where does that phrase I use so often at Beloit come from? Although the story has circulated for a long time, the most famous retelling comes from Stephen Hawking in his book, A Brief History of Time. A well-known scientist once gave a public lecture on astronomy. He described how the Earth orbits around the sun, and how the sun, in turn, orbits around the center of a vast collection of stars called our galaxy. At the end of the lecture, a little old lady at the back of the room got up and said, what you have told us is rubbish. The world is really a flat plate supported on the back of a large turtle. The scientist gave a superior smile before replying, what is the turtle standing on? You're very clever, young man, very clever, said the old lady. But it's turtles all the way down. Turtle after turtle supporting each other dependent on each other, trusting each other, building upon each other towards something far, far greater than themselves, doing the essential work of supporting each other while supporting the world collectively. The humble turtle who, when combined with other turtles, is collectively transformed into something of unexpected and unparalleled worth. Best achieving our college's mission, any college's mission, requires that we not see ourselves as independent contractors and clients. We are, when we are doing our work well, a living, breathing 
complicated and beautiful organism with a glorious array of divergent and connected parts. Within that organism, our lives draw breath and nutrients and we grow and strengthen from our interconnectedness. Understanding precisely this institutional biology is the secret sauce to the magic that faculty and staff and importantly students bring to this glorious college and it is the magic which students experience, understand, adopt, and take out as alumni. Over my 14 years at Beloit, I have heard thousands of love stories from students and alumni across the decades. Nearly every single story has the same narrative structure, challenge, support, insight, fun, substance, success, challenge again, support again, rinse and repeat over and over. This is the stuff of one honking great love story, a love story that has been adding turtles for 177 years, and now that love story extends to the love-worthy class of 2023. Welcome to your place among the generations of turtles holding up the world. It is as it always has been over the 177 year history of this college. Turtles all the way down. Thank you, class of 2023. I now turn over the microphone to Professor Sonia Maria Johnson, who brings words from Dr. Atira Coleman. On behalf of Dr. Tara Coleman's Beloit College mentors, Drs. Deborah Majid and Ander uh, Lisa Anderson Levy, who are not here with us today, I'm honored to offer brief words of pride, affirmation, and introduction. Atira, we are all bursting with joy. Your accomplishments we celebrate today fills our hearts and cups to overflowing. Thank you for pouring into our Beloit College community. Since becoming a Beloit alum in 2010, Dr. Coleman has leveraged her education to bring opportunities to others and transform communities. In her current role as equity manager for Rock County, Dr. Coleman is advancing ways to revision how we see, value, and receive the contributions all people can make to the lives of our children, friends, neighbors, and ourselves within Rock County. Atira began her inspiring and thoughtful work and scholarship to move communities forward at, quote, the speed of trust, end quote, as a sociology major and McNair scholar at Beloit. Through her doctoral research, Dr. Coleman brought nuanced ways to comprehend long-standing school level, level factors impacting racial achievement gaps. Making institutional spaces of thriving for all its members has since become her mission and passion to help create a world where systemic barriers no longer exist. As a leader at Beloit College, Atira Coleman created opportunities and innovative programming for students from multiple identities to find academic and career success. She found ways to enable community flourishing so that all can prosper. And she built durable pathways for us to operationalize ways to become better. With her astute problem solving skills, agile intellect, and tireless motivation, Atira is fearless in tackling even the most complex issues in society. Dr. Coleman, you inspire us all. We thank Atira. I'm a crier, girl. Get your tissues. They were kind enough to <laughs> what? Kind enough to have it right here for us. All right, I'm just gonna dab and keep it pushing. All right. 
We thank Atira for improving the community in which we live and work and for helping us to thrive. We are so proud to call Atira Coleman a Beloit College graduate. And while she's not here with us today, she is certainly here with us in heart and spirit. And I'm going to share a few key aspects of what Dr. Coleman wanted to impart directly to our graduates today. So while her words hold reflective instructions for all of us, graduating class of 2023, Dr. Coleman, she, her comments center you and your Beloit story. Dr. Coleman wanted you to know, class of 2023, that as you embark on your next chapters, you already contain all the ingredients for being resilient. What is key to this durability through life is staying true to who you are and how you invite joy in to sustain you. When Dr. Atira was sitting exactly where you are right now, she needed someone to be real and vulnerable because resilience is not something you work at to achieve. Resilience is something you endure. She wants you to know that resilience is the ability to adapt to change, to recover from setbacks, and to persevere in the face of challenges. It is not something that you are born with, but rather something you develop through your experiences. And you have already certainly had your fair share of experiences during your time at Beloit College. Dr. Coleman wants you to understand that whatever you think you see in all the people in front of you on this stage is not a thing or something only unique to us, but rather what you are all witnessing is experience over time. There are times that we all do not feel or act resilient. Dr. Coleman felt that insecurity when she first came to Beloit and wanted to major in computer science. She felt lost and had anxieties about being a first-generation college student that didn't have a clue of what to do or like she was wasting time. But time went on and she found her passion in sociology. Atira was uncertain when she applied to graduate school and the school that offered her funding was not her first choice. But time went on. When she thought she wanted to be a professor in a classroom, a pathway that made sense to people. But after teaching a year, she again felt lost, but she kept going. Dr. Coleman felt unsure when she was writing her dissertation on the school level factors that impacted the racial achievement gap, looking at how tracking, discipline, and other factors impact student learning. But while it was her passion, the rise in the media coverage of police brutality on the black community, and especially with our youth, it broke her heart. And she could not write for three months because she felt her passion wasn't even important when there was so much violence inflicted on the black community, her community. She eventually finished, but there were more more letdowns from jobs she really wanted and applied to and didn't get, or negative feedback on her work, and the list goes on. But she still continued to show up. Dr. Coleman showed up when she was dealt with letdowns, breakups, disappointments, and just people who generally did not like how she pursued liberation for all people. But she made it through and wants you to hopefully see how your story is not too different from her own. Dr. Coleman wants to remind you of what frames your resilience because sometimes we forget our journey of how we meet our successes along the way in the hard moments. So this is the resilience timeline that Dr. Coleman put together for the class of 2023. 
Y'all are resilient. I need to take a sip of water. You've been so resilient. <clears throat> the passing of Dr. Carla Davis, the passing of Dr. Majid, and many influential staff and faculty have left. All that happened. It happened to you. COVID happened. The having to adapt to a new way of learning because of COVID, it happened. Having to deal with family illness and death happened. Having to help family members figure out how they were going to keep going while you maintained being a student happened. The rise of police brutality happened. The lack of accountability for those police actions happened. Hate crimes and hate acts on this campus happened. Support for that trauma not being sufficient, it also happened. This list is not exhaustive because there are so many other traumatic things that occurred during your time here at Beloit. But Dr. Coleman felt it important to list because so much has happened. And sometimes we forget that the hurt from all of that still lives in our bodies and our minds. You came to Beloit College four years ago with one job, to get an education, which in itself is hard. But you did that all successfully, while also experiencing everything I just mentioned and so much more. That is being resilient. Atira wanted to be very clear that all the events that occurred over the past few years nearly broke her. And you all coped with that and more while trying to get a college education. Think about all the late nights you spent studying for exams, all the group projects that tested your patience, all the times you fell short of your goals. Yet, here you are with a wealth of knowledge and experience that will serve you well into the years to come. You have been resilient. Celebrate that. You all embody resilience. But resilience is not something you do. It's something we endure. So what can resilience feel like? It may feel like you've hit a wall or that you are officially at the burnout point. But not just because of the rigors of Beloit College, but because life has thrown a lot at your all generation. And honestly, adulting is hard. There's an illusion that the more you learn about how the world works and the injustices that exist, or the older you get, that it would be easier. But it isn't. It isn't always getting easier. Sometimes it gets harder. The reason it may be getting harder is because your generation is armed with the tools and the lenses to center people's humanity. And she loves that for you. Dr. Coleman and all of us surrounding you here today have hopes for the future through all of your innovative ideas for sustainability, for advocating for equality, for standing against exploitation. She admires your soft and quiet quitting because it means you know your worth. As a society, we show pride for how big our tolerance and capacity for continuing to endure, but the fatigue has taken a bigger toll than is usually acknowledged. And as you all continue on your journey to heal yourselves and our society, you must be wondering, how do we stay whole, true, authentic, and most importantly, healthy while we endure. It can seem easy to compromise our convictions or tone down our expectations for the comforts of others. However, Dr. Coleman challenges you to focus inward. Past, present, and future injustices have happened, and they are going to continue to happen. However, you have to choose to stay healthy enough to combat the future injustices. So how does one stay healthy enough to combat this fatigue that may be consuming your very being? 
How do you maintain staying authentically you? You reflect on the boxes we put ourselves in that prevent us from being our true authentic selves and ask yourself, how do I see myself beyond the constraints of other people's priorities and their gaze? Then come back to the basics of what you know, what you've experienced, because you all, all, you all are experts in being resilient. Now, let empathy for yourselves and others be your masterclass. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. It's the ability to put ourselves in someone else's shoes and see the world from their perspective. In today's fast-paced and increasingly divided world, empathy is more important than ever. It allows us to connect with others on a deeper level and build stronger relationships. As we go out into the world, we will encounter people from all walks of life. It's easy to judge people based on our own experiences and biases. But empathy allows us to see beyond those differences and find common ground. What has helped Dr. Coleman be empathetic is having a better understanding of what this work is. The work she does is accountability work. People don't like being held accountable. The work she does challenges people's foundational truths about themselves, and people don't like that. This work is all about people. The work is building infrastructure, and people are complicated. This is not a justification for them being difficult, but it is an explanation, and one that shifts the strategy from taking on the mental load of trying to convince them to putting the mental load back on them and guiding them through a process of understanding, unlearning, and adjusting to this new understanding of how the world really works. But empathy is not just about understanding others, class of 2023. It's also about understanding ourselves. When we cultivate empathy, we become more aware of our own feelings and motivations. We become better at regulating our emotions and communicating our needs to others. Empathy is a critical set, or rather a critical skill set, that we should all strive to develop. Empathy allows you to acknowledge and process emotions, to feel. Atira wants you all to prioritize joy. We are always talking about working hard to progress, but why does work have to be hard? We need to eat too, but we don't talk about eating hard. We live in a culture of celebrating overextending ourselves. To combat that so that you have the energy to be resilient, you need joy. Dr. Coleman doesn't have the perfect answer to what will bring you joy. Only you know that. But if you take nothing else away from Dr. Coleman's words, it is that developing your joy practice is critical. Our culture has a habit of framing play as only for children. It's not. It's a human need. Incorporating play into her life has been a game changer for Atira. So for her joy work, Dr. Coleman plays video games, plays with her cat, puts together puzzles, 3D puzzles, by the way, reads fiction, and seeks out the world's best roller coasters. The list goes on, but you must figure out what will bring you joy, because class of 2023, you've already endured, you have already proven how to be resilient. Now, how will you celebrate that achievement through seeking joy? Lastly, please remember that resilience is about surrounding yourself with a support system. None of us goes through life alone. And having a network of friends, family, and mentors who believe in you and support you can make all the difference. Lean on those people when you need them and be there for them 
when they need you. Create your community. In closing, class of 2023, Dr. Coleman wants you to remember that resilience is not a destination. It's a journey. It is something that you will continue to develop and refine throughout your life. So, as you leave this place and close this chapter, remember what it is to be resilient. Embrace the challenges that come your way. Learn from your experiences and never give up on being your true, unapologetic self. You, as you already are right now, those keys, those are the keys, all the ones you'll need for your future successes. Dr. Coleman says, keep doing you, baby. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dr. Johnson. The Administrative Policy Manual of Bloyd College provides that honorary degrees may be granted to those whose achievements are extraordinary and who represent by their lives and works the ideals for which Bloyd College stands. Dr. Atira Coleman has wisely been recommended for an honorary degree at today's ceremony. As you have seen, Dr. Atira Coleman, class of 2010, is an inspiration. An exemplary student and McNair scholar at Beloit, Atira was recognized as a leader who lifted up the entire community. After graduating from Beloit, she earned her master's and PhD in sociology from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, researching and studying the impact of inequality. We were spectacularly fortunate to attract Atira back to Beloit to direct, first, the McNair program and then our Student Success, Equity, and Community Office, while also co-directing the Weisberg Program in Human Rights and Social Justice. She helped underrepresented students like herself see themselves earning advanced academic degrees and finding success professionally. She became a leader of equity programs on campus, guiding us to create a better community for our students, faculty, and staff. She continues that work today as the equity manager for all of Rock County. We thank Dr. Atira Coleman for all of her contributions to our campus community and those she serves in the Rock County, Wisconsin area. And we are proud to call her an alumna. We will be in conversation with Dr. Coleman to determine the time and place that is most meaningful to her in which to actually present her with her Doctor of Letters degree and her hood. But please join me in congratulating Dr. Atira Coleman for having earned this special honor. Since 1982, the Warren Miller Blue Skies Award has recognized a senior who fosters good cheer and good humor and brings a light touch to our everyday lives on campus. The award's namesake is a 1960 Beloit alumnus whose witty and insightful cartoons appeared in the New Yorker magazine for more than four decades. The 2023 Warren Miller Blue Skies Award goes to Devin Pittman from Chicago, Illinois.
Devin is a positivity magnet. His huge smile and contagious laugh bring joy across campus as he helps others with energy to spare. Quote, Devin is that student everyone knows and feels connected to, says one nominator. Quote, he has added so much to the Bloyd College community and there will be a hole left when he is gone. That is true. As the Sexuality and Gender Alliance president, he helped provide programming and support for LGBTQIA plus community. Devin energetically welcomed and mentored new students as an orientation leader. He was Phi Kappa Psi philanthropically, philanthropy, philanthropy chair, excuse me, Black Students United Vice President, and has recently been awarded the Ellen Moss Memorial Prize in Art. It is no wonder that Theta Pi Gamma gave Devin the Sweeter Than Candy Award. Who knew Theta Pi Gamma had that award? And Seal honored him with a leadership award for organizing outstanding events. Quote, Devin is always full of jokes and never stops telling it like it is. But with his honesty comes a presence that makes students gravitate towards him, says one nominator. He has been instrumental in senior week being so great. After Beloit College, Devin, a studio art major and theater minor, will earn his wedding planning and interior design license from the New York Institute of Art and Design. He plans to open a Chicago-based wedding planning business with international clients. Please join me in congratulating Devin Pittman on receiving the 2023 Blue Skies Award. Members of the Bloyd College Class of 1981 established the Martha Peterson Prize to honor Beloit's seventh college president. The prize is awarded to a senior who best exemplifies the college's liberal arts traditions through academic achievements and as an active contributor to the college campus. Faculty members nominate students for this prize and members of the senior class vote on the final recipient. This year, the Martha Peterson Prize goes to Nicole Espinelli, also from Chicago, Illinois. Nicole graduates magna cum laude with a double major in health and society. Nicole is compassionate about the well-being of vulnerable populations and is well on her way to building a strong career in public health in the years ahead. Quote, Nicole is an absolute delight. She speaks up for others and supports her colleagues in the classroom and beyond. That's from one of her nominators. Quote, I'm so excited to see how she will continue to grow and contribute to all of her communities in the future. During summer research projects, Nicole became passionate about community health and wants to help immigrants and refugees, especially those entering the country. She gives back to the community by being heavily involved in the public health initiative and volunteers at Caritas, a local food pantry. Nicole inspires others as an active member and leader of Theta Pi Gamma Sorority and a head resident assistant. Nicole plans to continue her learning and service with a master's degree in health policy and manage management at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Please join me in congratulating Nicole on receiving this well-earned honor.
The senior class officers have selected Jada Daniel to give the class of 2023 address. Jada, come on up. There are few students in my 14 years at Beloit with the impact of Jada Daniel as a triple major in critical identity studies. Political science and sociology, she conducted research projects with underserved communities as a McNair scholar investigating race and discipline in Chicago schools and the impact of the college's career channels program on domestic minority students. At our recent Honors Day celebration, she was awarded a whopping seven awards, including the Ruth Coleman Peterson Prize in Political Science or International Relations, the William Kolb Award, the Charles D. Rosa 1898 Award, the Weisberg Human Rights Fellowship, and the OADI Grace and Lawrence Owsley Award for the second year running. Yet there is more. She is a middle blocker on the volleyball team, has been a stalwart member of Black Students United. As the group's president, she supported Black Joy and led the charge on issues of inequality on campus with equal parts, grace, strength, and determination. Quote, there is a reason Jada Daniel is present in so many important spaces on campus, says her mentor in political science professor Ron Watson. Beyond her deep intelligence and analytical mind, Jada has a fiery passion for social justice and she does not hesitate to voice, which she does not hesitate to voice when needed. Her presence inspires us all to do and be better, even as she holds herself to the very same standard. Jada will be attending Northwestern's Law School next year, where she will further leverage her scholarship into activism for social progress and racial justice. We are exceedingly lucky that Jada Daniel is a Beloiter. Please join me in welcoming Jada Daniel to the podium. Dear faculty, staff, guests, and fellow graduates, as I stand here today, it is my honor to deliver the student address. Everyone knows that I'm not one to back down from a challenge or pass up an opportunity to hear myself talk. I wrestled with what I could say on this day we had all anticipated since the very first day of school. Just kidding. We're graduating today, and the last thing that we want to hear is yet another lecture where we'll gaze into the distance and tune everything out as we wonder what we'll have for dinner other than commons. Now, I'm no STEM major, and I commend all those that dare to take on a challenge like that, but I know a little something about seasons and plants. I promise this is going somewhere, but let me tell you about the Beloita proverb that no one knows of till they reach the finish line. Summer, winter, spring, and autumn. Sometimes we experience all of this at once. And no, I'm not talking about the unpredictable Beloit weather we all love to hate. It was summer of 2019 when the humid and muggy air of Beloit summoned us to class where we would meet our chosen families, friends of a lifetime, mentors and advisors that we fangirled about. Hey, Dr. Johnson and even the ones we avoided by ways of email and, well, class. The excitement of all of the endless possibilities to reinvent ourselves carried us from class to practice, to rehearsals, games, and even to those Greek life parties we all secretly wanted to resist. Sorry, not sorry, Sig, Teak, and Phi We were all away from home, but we did anything to make this our safe haven. We found communities where we could be ourselves unapologetically and boldly. We befriended warm and inviting faces, joined all of the clubs we could possibly think of, and camped out in the library study rooms to prepare for an exam we just couldn't fail, followed by a spontaneous trip to Taco Nino's. It was autumn, and our leaves changed from green to firebird red and golden crisp yellow. The sun came out, but it started to feel like it was hiding from us. The brisk air from the treacherous gust of wind took one final blow, 
condemning our leaves to the ground and welcoming the harsh winter. We entered a period of transformation. Things got tough, classes got intense, we started falling out with people we planned to spend the rest of our lives with, and we became people we couldn't even recognize. We questioned our gifts and passions, and sometimes whether we belonged. As the weather got colder and the leaves changed colors, we all kind of got the hang of things, with everything from study skills, beloiter time, and even how to send emails that wouldn't get ignored, or so we thought. Time never waited for us. With a blink of an eye, we completed our very first semester and couldn't wait to go home to rave to our family and friends about Beloit and everything the Yale of the Midwest had to offer. But I think this all taught us to be careful about what we wished for. Winter was upon us and hardship struck us. We all couldn't wait to come back to campus to see all of our friends, take the classes we fought to get a seat in and get our taste of freedom back. The COVID-19 pandemic shattered our plans, robbed us of in-person connections, and for some of us, claimed our loved ones. We were alone, and we were in one of the darkest times of our lives. We isolated ourselves, learned new skills, and even became TikTok connoisseurs. Miles and miles apart, we still managed to keep in contact with each other and finish strong on Zoom University. We were forced to start anew, reflect, and be comfortable with our dormancy knowing that while things didn't look promising, we could come out alive together. So we waited together for the sun to finally come out because we all knew that this too shall pass. It became spring and we came back our second year and beyond, eager to be in the classroom and to reclaim the full college experience that was taken from us. We couldn't wait to remember what everyone's face looked like behind those itchy masks and embrace each other even if we had to be six feet apart. We were reborn and ready to grow and blossom into the students, friends, lovers, and leaders we all aspire to be. But to grow, we needed rain, and man did it pour. Rain clattered against our leaves, lightning bolts struck our fragile branches, and claps of thunder reverberated throughout the sky as if it was taking this anger out on us. We grieved old versions of ourselves and even all of the angels that are no longer with us. Dear Mom and Carla, this one is for you. We fell in and out of love with ourselves and others, but the rain finally stopped pouring and the sun broke out of the sky. Temperatures began to rise, the days became longer and new, and blossoming leaves began to replace the leaves that we once shed it. Today, we stopped to celebrate and marvel at the beauty and gloriousness of our transformations. We went through such disastrous times and uncharted waters, but blossomed into something great, something spectacular. We faced storms and harsh seasons that would destroy others. With our resilience and faculty and staff that weathered the storm with us, we became indestructible and deeply rooted. We could not be shaken, tossed, or uprooted. Out of all of the content, and the equations. Beloit taught us much more than we signed up for. See, Beloit promised to prepare us to equip us to be communicators, collaborators, problem solvers, amongst other things. But what they didn't tell us is that they prepared us to weather the storm and use the rain to bloom. Wherever life plants us, whether it's the season of harvest and abundance, or a season of unforgiving storms of heartbreak and loss, Beloit has taught us that we are planted firmly and will always bloom with grace. So as we look forward to the future, may we continue to accept every storm with grace and let it water us and the seeds we plant for our futures. Congratulations, class of 2023. We did it. Thank you, Jada. Earlier in the week, I had a chance to spend a few minutes with Jada's dad. And uh, uh, there are many, many proud parents in the audience today, but Jada's dad is surely among those. Three members, 
three spectacular members of the Bloyd College community were honored three weeks ago and are joining the ranks of faculty and staff emeriti. Their extraordinary contributions over dozens and dozens of years have improved the lives of generations of students as well as their colleagues across campus. You can read a little bit about them in the back of your program. They are Associate Professor of Psychology, Greg Buchanan. I think Greg is preparing to go to Iceland. Is Greg here? Um, Associate Professor of Sociology, Carol Wickersham. And I don't see Carol. And the brilliant college editor of the Bloyd Magazine, Susan Kasten. I now call on Richard M. Nemec, Chair of the Board of Trustees, to bring greetings to the graduating seniors on behalf of the trustees and to present the board's statement of authorization for the granting of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees at today's exercises. Dick. Thank you, Scott. Good morning. On behalf of Beloit's Board of Trustees, I'm pleased to extend best wishes and congratulations to all members of the class of 2023 and to their families and friends. It is my pleasure to inform you that the Board of Trustees has authorized the awarding of appropriate degrees at this year's commencement exercises to all such candidates as have been certified by the registrar and approved by the faculty. In accordance with these actions and on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Beloit College, I now call upon President Scott Bierman to confer these awards pursuant to the legal authority vested in the Board of Trustees under the charter granted by the legislature of the Territory of Wisconsin on February 2, 1846. Dean Eric Boynton, will you now please present the candidates for degrees? Mr. Mr. President, I first have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Will these candidates please rise and commence coming forward? Yeah, a candidate who attains the highest scholastic standing during four years of work at Beloit College is selected to represent the group and to receive a hood in recognition of this achievement. By action of the appropriate authorities and with the approval of the faculty and the board of trustees, the candidates so chosen to represent the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts at this 173rd commencement exercise are George Edward Carlson. from New Orleans, Louisiana, whose degree is awarded summa cum laude. Brandon Scott Jolly from Seymour, Wisconsin, whose degree is awarded summa cum laude. Lum Duc Nguyen from Hanoi, Vietnam, whose degree is awarded summa cum laude.
Will the candidates please come forward? In accordance with the recommendation of the Provost and Dean of the College, on behalf of the faculty and the Board of Trustees of Beloit College, and by the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts. The token of the hood now placed upon these three stellar students confers upon all candidates whom you represent the degree of Bachelor of Arts together with all the rights and privileges pertaining. Animesh, Sanjay, Adhikari, Departmental Honors, Biology. Brianna Aguilar. Mushfek Dazim Ahmed. Paige. Elena Araudi. Sarah Aldridge. Caden Walter Edward Anderson, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Psychology. Amaya M. Anderson. Daniela Aponte, cum laude. Eleanor Marie Arms, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Sociology. Cora Jane Aubert, cum laude. Estelle Marie Barrett, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Environmental Studies. Abigail Lee Barsness, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Creative Writing. Alexandre Brandeis Binder Bickford. Victoria A. Blair. May, uh, summa cum laude. Eliana Boyd LaSalle. Thea Julianne Boyne, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors History. Gaia Brayman Wanak. Finn Oliver Brandt, summa cum laude. Henry Braun. Alexa Jane Brooks, magna cum laude. Angelo Douglas Buff. Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Health and Society. Yesenia Camacho. Amir H. Camper. Brady Scott Card. Chester Carlson, cum laude. Patrick Casola, magna cum laude. Brendan John Moffat Chambers, summa cum laude. Yeah. 
Shruti Chandrasekhar, cum laude. Deontay Charles. Addison Sherry Shahan. Logan S. Winston Clark, summa cum laude. Paige Elizabeth Clark, Departmental Honors History. Charles Creed Catrill. Christian Benjamin Krauss. Yesenia Cruz Pena. Aqua Crystal Cum Laude. Ian Scott Curry Magna Cum Laude. Jada Marie Daniel, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Critical Identity Studies, Departmental Honors, Political Science, Departmental Honors, Sociology. Natalie Ruth Decker, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Media Studies, Departmental Honors, Theater. Lily Dimitrov, cum laude. Nigel Brandon Duff, cum laude. Jeremy Duval, magna cum laude. Logan Charles Eyshide, magna cum laude. Michael P. Ingalls. Nicole Espinelli, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Health and Society. Quinn Elliot Evans, summa cum laude. Chung Yi Fun, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Literary Studies. Maya Simone Friedman, cum laude. Benelli Paolo Ganch, summa cum laude. Mallory Reese Goldberg, magna cum laude. Morgan Goodyear, cum laude. Chloe B. Graff, magna cum laude. David Guevara, cum laude. Sylvie Lewis Gunderson. Savannah Eve Henley Rave, magna cum laude. Departmental Honors Creative Writing, Departmental Honors Literary Studies. Sydney Hukin, summa cum laude. Departmental Honors, Sociology. Ariane Irafasa, magna cum laude. Departmental Honors, Health and Society. Devin Teva Irwin. Theodore Iska. Jerry Jones. And Johnny Joseph, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, Sociology. Audrey May Ketterer, 
Magna Cum Laude. Christian Jonathan King. Logan Patrick Kirk. Sarah Emily Klein. Sedona Rose Colmer, magna cum laude. Fidao Kung, summa cum laude, Department of Honors Political Science. Eleanor Chase Kosak, summa cum laude, Department of Honors History. Thomas Glenn Sands Kosakowski. JD Krieger. Zoe Catherine Landolt. Emily June Larson, summa cum laude. Grace Sophia Law, magna cum laude. Jude Benjamin Little, cum laude. Rashawn Lloyd. Lillian A. Lopez Segura, cum laude. Irakli Maisaradze, summa cum laude. Amasi Dakare Martin. Montana Nicole McMahon, cum laude. Corey McNeil. Cameron Myers. Sarah Elizabeth Miller, magna cum laude. Elizabeth Helena Moens. Isabel Elise Morrow, cum laude. Daniel Alex Merzina. Hope Joy Nelson, magna cum laude. Kaya Nishino, cum laude. Matthew O'Leary, summa cum laude. Graham R. Olin, magna cum laude. Charlotte Rosalia Oliva, magna cum laude, Department of Honors, Sociology. Gianna Arlene Parata. Samuel Douglas Peters, summa cum laude. Chao Jang Pham, magna cum laude. Vuliak Phan, summa cum laude, Department of Honors, Creative Writing, Department of Honors, Sociology. Chase Heather Piper, cum laude. Devin Pittman.
Rimke Richard, summa cum laude, Department of Honors, Creative Writing. Jane Quincy Rendleman, magna cum laude. Juan Jose Reyes. Ariana Tierra Rice. Ophelian Richel, magna cum laude. Stephanie Michelle Rivera, cum laude. Katerina Yvonne Robinson, summa cum laude, Department of Honors, Sociology. Antonio Rodriguez Mata, cum laude. Luis David Rodriguez Vasquez. Emilia Roman, magna cum laude, Department of Honors, Sus Psychology. Max Jiwong Saladar. Samuel Schoenberg Schachter. Holden Schultz Larson. Kivan Shanklin Jr. Nathan Bradley Sill. Baba Singh, cum laude. Benjamin Daniel Sipiora, cum laude. Karen M. Soto. Span. <laughs> Keith Nolan Spindle, magna cum laude. Jordan James Stewart. <laughs> Cody Ryan Talamabala. Alexandria Taylor. Jonathan Tempone. Jacob Tupfer. Michaela Ray Tryon, magna cum laude. Esther Pauline Veach. Magna Cum Laude, Department of Honors, Creative Writing. Isabella Verdi, Cum Laude. Edward Bautista Verzosa, Magna Cum Laude, Department of Honors, Economics. Nolan Vinyl. Connor Waldron. Yeah. Emily Grace Walker, magna cum laude. Yeah. Li Feng Wong, summa cum laude, Department of Honors Computer Science, Department of Honors Mathematics. Abigail Meyer West, summa cum laude. Moon Ray West, summa cum laude, Department of Honors Psychology. Phelan J. Weigold, magna cum laude. 
Clark Burton Woodard, cum laude. Sophie Jo Ray, summa cum laude. Crystal Yang, summa cum laude, Department of Lauders Creative Writing. Yuping Wright Yang, magna cum laude. Xavier Keen Youngdale, summa cum laude, Department of Honors Critical Identity Studies. Zhang Anru. Mr. President, I next have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. Will these candidates please rise and commence coming forward? A candidate, a candidate who attains the highest scholastic standing during four years of work at Beloit College is selected to represent this group and to receive a hood in recognition of this achievement. By action of the appropriate authorities and with the approval of the faculty and the Board of Trustees, the candidate so chosen to represent the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science at this 173rd commencement exercise is Neve Probst from Iowa City, Iowa, whose degree is awarded summa cum laude. In accordance with the recommendation of the provost and the dean of the college, on behalf of the faculty and the board of trustees of Floyd College, and by the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science. The token of the hood placed upon you confers upon all the candidates whom you represent the degree of Bachelor of Science, together with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Congratulations, Neil. Damaris Allen, <laughs> Department of Honors, Chemistry. Michael Ajay Ongsung, Cum Laude. Linz Jonathan Bernadel. Daniel Leclerc Bolin. <laughs> Tierra Tyree Renee Boyance, <laughs> cum laude, Department of Honors Biology. Isabella Marie Cleary, magna cum laude. Alonzo Casillas. Riley Joe Kahn. Michaela Vernice Davis, magna cum laude, Department of Honors Biology, Department of Honors Environmental Geology. Ryan William Dini. Magna Cum Laude, Department of Honors, Environmental Geology. Olivia B. Fabaric. Raven Jidung Ferber, Magna Cum Laude. Shamar Avello Flanagan. Emily S. Gonzalez, magna cum laude. Cyrus Andrew Habas, magna cum laude, Department of Honors Biochemistry. Samuel Fowler Hall, cum laude, Department of Honors Geology. Mason William Hoffman, 
summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Biochemistry. Tyler James Hoover, cum laude. Belinda A. K.K. Aris Canal, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Computer Science, Departmental Honors Mathematics. Camden James Leonard, summa cum laude. Rose Los Austin, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors Biochemistry. Takashi Matsuda. Summa cum laude. Emma Lynn May, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors Environmental Biology, Departmental Honors Geology. Jordan Latavia McDonald. Philippe Nicholas Mortaliti. Madison Neely Moser, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors Biology, Departmental Honors Health and Society. Jade Sandra Mosquera, cum laude. Sebastian Chris Christopher Olson, summa cum laude. Sydney V. Olson, magna cum laude. Alexis Catherine Olson, magna cum laude. Audrey Catherine Peasley, summa cum laude. Tiffany Panetta. Harry Lee Priest to the third. <laughs> Emiliano Alonzo Reyes. <laughs> Maxwell Austin Robin, magna cum laude, Department of Honors, Political Science. Onyx Roygi Diaz, summa cum laude. Jack A. Rowland. Eric Brooks Reiner Schilling. Madison Andrea Schmidt, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Health and Society. Antariksh Sharma, magna cum laude. Michelle P. Stevens. <laughs> Dakota Marie Thompson, summa cum laude, Department of Honors Biology, Department of Honors Psychology. Derek Paul Veenstra. William Walter Warren V, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Chemistry. May Judas Will Willison, cum laude. James Marvin Yano. Evan Alexander Zinger, cum laude. Shukai Chow. Emma Fern Zimmerman, summa cum laude.
Can the class of 2023 all stand? My honor to present the class of 2023. Okay, please be seated for a few minutes. One of the hardest jobs in all of higher education is reading the names at commencement. Please thank Provost Eric Boynton for his spectacular job. But this is one of Eric's last duties as provost. For most of you, the next time you see Eric, he will be Beloit College's president. It's like the best job in higher education. Congratulations, Eric. You may not know that being president comes with a scepter. So I bequeath this, Eric Boynton, to you. I look out. It's so many friends right in front of me whose futures are so bright and whose last four years have made a difference at this college, who have changed the college, changed the people to your left and to your right, changed the people to your front and back, and changed me. Takes my breath away. None of this would have happened were it not for the unparalleled superpowers of all your parents and guardians, please join me in thanking our newly minted parents of a Beloit College graduate. turtles all the way down, but you are here also as beneficiaries of generations of past students, parents, and friends of the college. The resources the college employs to help make this education possible are a direct result of thousands and thousands of generous supporters who believe that access to a school like this matters. Without it, without them, there would not be a graduating class of 2023 that looks or feels anything like you, and that would be a crime. Please join me in thanking all the many people who have supported your access to this college so generously. Turtles all the way down. Now, take a look at the faculty and staff that are here today, sitting behind you mostly. If you asked any, of one, any one of them what it is that keeps them working at Beloit College, they would answer without any hesitation that it is you. Your success is their success. Please join me now in thanking the staff and faculty of Beloit College. Applause 
Aaron Chapin, the college's first president, said of the early alumni of the college something that I and future presidents will be able to say about you. Alma mater looks fondly on your faces. Her heart swells with worthy pride as she reviews the lives you've been living since you went out from her charge and she borrows the honors you have won and wears them as jewels for her adornment today. Your presence fills her heart with gladness and her face with smiles. The values of this college are embodied by my friends in front of me. The glorious class of 2023, I promise, for my very last time, turtles all the way down. Okay, now, parents, family members, you are going to want to congratulate your recent graduate right outside the doors to this gymnasium. That is a mistake. <laughs> if you do that, we are going to become an inextricable jumble of humanity and all of us will be very frustrated. Do not try and meet your beloved new graduate in this building because if you collectively do so, you will collectively fail. Meet them in the atrium of the Sanger Science Center where you will be 100% successful. Repeat after me. I will not meet my beloved graduate in this building. I will meet them in the atrium of the Sanger Science Center. Okay. I invite this class to stand one more time. The faculty and staff will follow the platform party out of the recessional, then they'll be followed by our newly minted graduates, I think. Um, thank you for celebrating this great day with all of us at Beloit College. I hope your remaining packing goes readily and that your travels are safe. Thanks for, to all of you for being here today on this very special day.